want to just get us grounded for the next couple of days on the issue of plastics. Some of you will know a lot of this, maybe new to others, but just to recenter us for the solutions focused conversations ahead. So plastics have undeniably changed our lives and in many ways for the better, but we've also created a pollution problem of an almost unimaginable scale. This map shows more information than you can possibly get from the audience. But the bottom line of the information is pretty bleak. Today, plastics have been found in the ocean from the Arctic to the Antarctic and from the seafloor to the surface. They're everywhere. About 40% of the plastics that we're using today are used just once and then tossed. And you can imagine that the chain from production to purchase to use to disposal offers many opportunities for leakage. So about 9 million tons of plastic waste are hitting the ocean every year. Imagine five plastic grocery bags full of plastic waste stacked up in front of you, and that same stack in front of your neighbor to your right and your left, and extend the chain around every coastline of the world. And you can start to visualize what 9 million tons really looks like. So how did we get here? In about the mid-1800s, the very first plastics were created from cellulose, and they were created to replace rare and expensive materials like ivory. Just a couple decades later, we were able to make plastic from petrochemicals, and that technology leap opened up a whole new range of possibilities for plastic. And it created things that revolutionized medicine, that improved food safety, that lightened our cars and our planes, and created life-saving innovations like helmets and airbags. In 1950, we saw the dawn of the plastics boom. And since that time, we've produced 8 billion metric tons of plastic. And over the next few years, with production levels continuing, we're projected to hit 34 billion tons by 2050. The largest market by far for this material is packaging. Packaging products on average are used for less than six months. And packaging is also making up about half of the plastic waste globally today. So one of the reasons plastic has been such an incredible and prolific material is it's lightweight. But it's also that same lightweight that causes it to float on the wind and in the waves and be distributed through the environment. Yet that lightweight has been a major boon for our existence. Imagine for a moment the weight of thousands of glass bottles being transported by car or by plane. Now imagine the same number of bottles made of plastic. The weight difference represents an enormous savings in carbon emissions. So I'm not saying that plastic is the only option. What I'm saying is that it's a really complicated equation and we have to consider the full impact and the full life cycle of the products that we choose and the materials that go into different applications. Yet we can, I think, all agree that a big problem with plastics and other waste today is it's ending up where it doesn't belong. It's ending up out in the environment and in the ocean where over time it can break down into smaller and smaller pieces and it's beginning to enter our food chain. And we hear reports every day from new things like beer and honey and table salt where we're finding micro and nanoplastics. It's a little bit of a scary picture. So the key is once plastic hits the ocean, it's awfully difficult to recover. So we need to prevent it from getting there in the first place, which should make sense. If you're in a sinking boat and you just bail and bail and bail, at some point you're gonna be exhausted and you'll sink. You have to find the hole and plug it. The same holds true. We need to stem the flow. We need to look upstream and prevent it from getting out there, and then we can focus on cleaning up the mess. So if we consider that the last point just before waste hits the ocean is our last chance, you can look up the value chain and see a number of places where interventions can be made to prevent waste from getting out there in the first place. And there are opportunities at every point in that value chain for creativity and innovation. There are two areas in particular I want to talk about today, materials design and waste management. So I'm going to talk a little bit less than planned on materials design because I think we're going to hear a lot of that over the next coming days. But importantly, this is the area that gets all the media attention. Nobody really wants to hear about waste management. And 
what gets media attention and thus public attention are the really flashy, exciting, sexy things, right? People love to hear about the latest water bottle made from seaweed or edible utensils. They make great stories and they're really compelling and they do demonstrate the opportunity for innovation. But they're just scratching the surface of the problem, right? It's not the bottom line solution. We need a whole suite of solutions to get there. One of the areas that we've been promoting is really thinking about the product before the package, right? Instead of focusing on the product, how can we find new, excuse me, instead of focusing on the package, how can we find new ways to deliver a product that either doesn't require a package or can use a reusable package or can use some kind of smaller reduced package that's recyclable and we're really creating products for their end of life. Whether it's biodegradable, compostable, recyclable, it's really designing in order to think about that end of life. Now, the challenge is, as long as there are consumer goods that are packaged or consumer goods made of plastic, there will be waste and we can't ignore that side of the equation. And no matter how well we design, if we don't think about what's gonna happen to it at its end of life, then it's kind of beside the point. In places around the world where waste is most mismanaged, the key is pretty basic. We need to look upstream and we need to make major investments quickly today in the collection and the sorting of waste. If we can collect it and we can sort it, we can figure out do we need a recycling plant, do we need a clean landfill, do we need a composting plant? Now we start to get into the business of actually putting that material back to work. Another key with these products is gonna be thinking about value, right? How can we increase value in the products from the point of creation and incentivize the collection and recycling? So whether that's changing up the glues and the colors that we use or reducing the number of plastics that goes into a, circle, a certain um, item, we're going to be able to increase the incentive for that end of life in infrastructure. Now, this is an area that's largely re the responsibility of governments and governments around the world are stepping up and investing in waste management, but it's also industry and you're seeing companies um, directly related in the supply chain and beyond thinking about extended producer responsibility and starting to make really tangible commitments that if I'm producing a product, my responsibility doesn't end when it's purchased. My responsibility ends when that product is ready to be recycled and come back in. I've got to follow it all through to end of life. So industry and corporates can, sorry, industry and government can really partner together to make sure the investment is there to build the infrastructure needed so that we can start to recover and bring these products back into the supply chain. So lastly, ending on a positive note, the question is, what can we all do? I think we're all here because we know we have everybody a role to play. So whether it's a conservationist like me, or it's the plastics industry directly, or entrepreneurs, or students, anybody across the full range of civil society has a role to play in solving the problem. And I think what's really incredible about this wildly challenging, hairy problem that we're confronting today is that it is global, but it's visible, and that helps us in this case because people can see the problem and are inspired to take action. And I think if we think on the individual level and the household level and the community level and the corporate level and the national level, and all of a sudden, if we're all coming together and doing each piece along the way to do our part, we will solve this problem and in our lifetime. And I think this group of people is proof of that as you are all innovating and designing and thinking about how do we have a healthier, tighter, circular economy. So thank you for being here and thank you for making this all happen this week. <laughs>